My dad was a violin player, a virtuoso violin player, and my brother played acoustic guitar. But like at the time, I was heavily into Black Sabbath. I loved them so much, I was like, just the guitar riffs and the songs inspired me to pick up the guitar. At first I wanted to play drums and my parents didn't buy me a drum set. My sister and her boyfriend at the time bought me a bass. Then I traded the next day for a guitar. So the rest is history. So the music around the house, like my dad would play classical stuff in the car. My brother would listen to, you know, fusion type stuff like Aldi Miola with uh, Chick Corea, Santana, Stereo Vaughn. I bring it to my guitar teacher and he'll show me how to play the, the solos and the riffs. And, you know, this is before the shredding era. I was listening to like really fast guitar playing, so when that stuff came out, I was ready for it. So after high school, I moved to Hollywood, California and went to GIT, Musicians Institute. So I'd wake up every day at 5 o'clock in the morning and I'd practice. Go to school, you know, 10 to 6. Then after that, you know, jam my friends. You know, then I'd come home, practice till I went to bed. And I was like that every day. I was very dedicated. I graduated with honors, with high honors. And it was this incredible school. So after Hollywood, I came back to Albany, New York. And we started Mr. Strange. And we toured up and down the East Coast, played with many bands. We opened for Ingbe, opened for Shaka and Messiah, diff different bands we played with. In our very first show, there's a line out the door. So after Mrs. Strange, I formed a band Jekyll and Hyde, which was kind of my own music. Me and the drummer wrote the uh, majority of the stuff. So that was my gateway into a solo career. My very first album, Total Freedom, was spontaneous. I'd like walk in the studio, I would just that day compose a song. The album Full Circle, uh, that had like acoustic stuff, electric, um, classical, blues, jazzy stuff mixed together. The albums are a snapshot in time. That time in life, that's how I was feeling. I go with the flow with the albums, how I write, and that's how it comes out. I've been writing for guitar magazines for many years, since probably 2000. Uh, I wrote, you know, guitar lessons in the guitar player, guitar world. And um, for the past eight years, I've been writing as a magazine in Italy called Axe Magazine. Like a monthly column, I write, you know, guitar lessons. I love to teach, you know, it helps my own playing, and five days a week, you know, 60 kids a week, you know, or 50. Performing is my favorite thing to do, but teaching is like, I call it my day job. <laughs> Afterwards, I got hired by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which is an amazing band. I mean, I seen them live a long time ago, and I was blown away by the music, the musicians, it was just incredible. And I, was, I said to myself, it'd be great to play with these guys. At the time, I was teaching a violin player that did some shows with them, and you know, he invited me to the show, and I went backstage, talked to the uh, the musical director, and then I got a call from the management company, and they wanted me to come down to audition in New York City. So I went to audition, and it was incredible. I, I played the music, and they were blown away. They were like, wow, you're great. You auditioned 500 guitar players, and we like you the best. And I was like, wow, wow. Just to play the music, you know, just to experience the whole thing, and. I'm so proud to be part of that band. I feel very fortunate to play music full time for a living. If I had any regret, maybe I should have stayed in LA after um, MI. <laughs> but I just follow my heart with music and life. So, you know, things are meant to be. So I made the right decisions.